that, that's that's wonderful advice, and I agree with you. You know, it's uh, uh, with recessions come neat neat uh, uh, opportunities, but they also uh, can uh, create a restless night or so. So. What do you see? Do you find that though, Wilson? Is that what, what's your thought on the internal recruiters? How do you guys try to overcome that objection? Do you run into it much? Well, we are we're over strictly on the collection side. So with with us, uh, we're we're helping, of course, you guys get paid. Uh, right. So, but so you must have clients who run into this, though. You must hear about what they do. One hundred percent, and we do have some that because we've actually gone after. Uh, uh, accounts where they hired the recruiter and uh, for the job position that they were looking for, which was a placement fee as far as uh, ours or our attorneys were concerned for our clients. And so we have seen that from a collection side where they just come in and they say, hey, uh, we're, we're looking for somebody over HR, we'll just take your recruiter. So we are definitely seeing that. It seems like it peaked probably two or three years ago. Now, not to say that, that it's still not happening. We're just not seeing it here on the collection side as much. Right, right. With one thing that is always true, uh, the indicator that we see for a recession is, is we start seeing huge balances come in for collections from the temp side, and we see a huge surge in backdoor hires to where... Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Uh, to me, it almost seems counterproductive that they're hiring people going into a recession, but they're typically hiring people and not wanting to pay the fee. So we see yep. surge. That's kind of an indicator that there's probably something running running through the economy. So, um, but I, I do agree with you. I, I think that the internal recruiter, as the companies start I expanding and, and trying to pull the talent out of the uh, agency side, I think that that's a real problem. What do you see, though, with going into the recession? And I know this is a uh, – you really can only look back at the past to predict the future, but what do you see with that next recession? What do you see as the, uh, as the biggest opportunity for a recruiter? Or, or as you may have already touched on that as far as how do you prepare for that, prepare for that next recession? Because, I mean, we're, we're six months or two years out. At some point, the economy has to excel. It's, it's, it's just it's not, it's not going to defy gravity. What do you see? Yeah, no, no question. No question. Um, and most estimates are uh, 14 months. Um, the good news is um, I, I was listening to a, a really great economist at Pinnacle named Elliot Eisenberg, and he said it's probably, you know, a year to 14 months out. The good news is he doesn't feel like it's going to be – the 2009 level recession, which was obviously cataclysmic, um, he's thinking more 2001-93 recession. Well, so it's a mild sort of recession. But, you know, when you're in our business, employment is the first one hit in a, in a recession, so there's no such thing as a mild recession. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in the fact that, you know, they say this about candidates. Uh, the, the old axiom is it's not a recession if you have a job. Right. So if ever if your neighbors are laid off, you feel sorry for your neighbors, but you're not laid off. So you didn't know there was a recession. I think the same thing is true for recruiting firms uh, in a recession if they've got an excellent client base. So look at it this way. Every single day in the walls. And if you look at Wall Street, if you look at that ticker, you know, you watch CNBC while you're riding that life cycle at lunch and you see that ticker and there's green and there's red. So every single day. There's companies that are doing well, and there's companies that are doing poorly, and that doesn't change in a recession. So to me, and I say this every single day, my people are so sick of me saying this, they roll their eyes. Here's what bad firms do. Bad firms think good times are never going to end. They have plenty of jobs. They've got senior people who can get jobs. Senior people have stopped making business development calls years ago. They just, they just milk their current client base. What do you got this month, boss? What do you got this month, boss? They hire a bunch of recruiters. So now they've got you know, seven, this is an actual firm that I work with, seven senior recruiters and 21 people in the firm. So 14 sourcers. And the idea is, well, we're trying to make as much money as we can. You know, John here has all these uh, job orders. Well, here's what happens. Now, the recession comes, and as you well know, Wilson, when the recession comes, it doesn't come gradually. It doesn't announce itself. It's just you walk in one day, and it's here. And the, 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 the whole, you know, the water spigot doesn't work anymore. So those firms tend to struggle because they've got 21 uh, 
uh, employees. There's a payroll every single week, and now there's nothing to work on. And the, the single biggest mistake I see people make is they say, well, we don't want to lose old Lou here. He's been with us three years. He's an excellent sourcer. Maybe he can learn how to develop business. No, he can't. If he could have, he would have done it before now, and he certainly ain't going to be able to do it in a recession. Uh, so the best firms contract and let go of those recruiters and they go back down to seven people, which is enormously disheartening morale wise. I get it, but that's the price you pay for expanding too much. Um, what I try to do is never have that kind of ratio of, you know, three to one sourcers, uh, to recruiters. I don't think it's necessary, especially if you're using the tools correctly. Um, but I believe in, uh, getting client development done during uh, the good times. So right now, my people are forced, mandatory. They have to make cold business development calls every single day. And they go, boss is nuts, man. We have so many job orders and he wants us to get more. But what I'm looking for is a client base that is wide in scope. It's deep as far as breadth. We've got a decent level of clients who are doing great. They're on the green of that ticker. And if we do that and the recession comes, we'll never feel it. Not only will we never feel it, but we'll go recruit the people who are good recruiters that you had to let go. And we will grow during a recession. I've done it four times. Well, that's, uh, that, 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 is, that is very wise advice, Danny. That, that is, you know, I mean, that's, it, it's the gospel. So I certainly uh, agree with you on that. Now, We'll wrap up, and I know that a lot of folks that have listened to this uh, uh, conversation want to know, okay, how do I, how do, I do business with, with Danny? If I'm a recruiter, I've got rookies, I'm a seasoned uh, recruiter. How do they reach out to you? What's the best way to, to start that relationship with you, Danny? I appreciate that. Yeah, so um, my training company is uh, is uh, called, arrogantly enough, according to Danny.com, uh, uh, it's a script, uh, subscription service. Uh, it's an online coaching service where every month uh, we have videos um, that we put in play. And my 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 speaking and coaching business is simply um, a reflection of my search firm. My search firm is a think tank for the things I put online. Anything you see from me in the way of training, information, whether it's a podcast, I have a podcast, I have webcasts. Uh, I have four minute videos on skill sets. If you're a member of accordingdanny.com, you get all of that stuff. Uh, I think it's a hundred bucks or so a month. You know, we have a few thousand firms that are members. Um, if they just go to accordingdanny.com and uh, look for information, they'll get a hold of my marketing director and she'll certainly welcome them as members. If not, there's, as you said, two books in the bookstore. Um, and, uh, there's a whole like black market of me on YouTube. I have no idea how it gets there, but, uh, it's on there. So there's lots of ways they, they, they can find me, I guess. Well, outstanding. Well, Danny, I, I can attest as a vendor to the industry, like I said, whenever, whenever we take a look, cause, uh, we, we probably do about 12 to 14 conferences a year and we put a star by the ones that you're speaking at because we know attendance is always going to be, uh, always going to be high. And so if any of our listeners out here are, uh, are, are listening to this, I, I can't recommend enough go out and, uh, and uh, contact Danny because, uh, you know, as Danny mentioned, everything that, that uh, I have been told with people that have gone through it is it's not in theory, it's in practicality, and it does get results. Well, Danny, I appreciate you joining me on this uh, episode and i am sure i will see you out on the road again at some of your speaking arrangements and uh, once again i appreciate you joining me this week look forward to it thanks wilson take care